So now in this video, for this series, we come back to the NPN bipolar junction transistor switch. When we close the switch that gives the base current, the transistor turns on. We're going to add a capacitor though. That capacitor will instantly charge and uh, not affect the circuit while the transistor is on. So it will be saturated, will have enough base current that the transistor conducts fully. The load will limit the current. When we release the switch, the capacitor that is fully charged will start uh, pushing current through the uh, base 2 emitter back to the capacitor. So current's going to flow. At first it will flow enough to keep the transistor saturated, but then current's going to go down and uh, at some point not enough current's going to go from base to emitter to keep it fully conducting, saturated. Then it enters the active region. The active region is when the transistor starts limiting current. And that's going to keep going down as base to emitter current goes down until it turns off uh, fully. So let's get to building it on the breadboard. We already have the uh, switch right here to the positive rail as you can see right there and we're going to take a resistor and actually let's add the uh, transistor first. So you can see here that the arrow there, the emitter, goes to the negative rail. I already have a jumper to the negative rail. This is a 2N3904. So looking at the flat side, the emitter is the left pin, base is the middle pin, and collector is the right pin. If I turn it this way, it's lined up like you see on the schematic right there. So we're going to put the emitter to the bottom pin now to that jumper there. The base is one row above it. We're going to connect this resistor from the base of the transistor to the other side of the switch. Pretty straightforward. We're going to use a 10 kilo ohm resistor and put that there to uh, the base. There we go. Now that we have the uh, base, the middle pin, to the resistor, we're going to push this back. So now it's going to be a little hard to see the uh, resistor there. But in any case, we have our load. It's an LED protected by a resistor. So I'm going to grab the uh, LED. It goes to the collector, the top pin there. I'm going to take the short lead, put that to the collector line lead. The anode's going to head up towards the positive supply. We'll look at that in a little bit. So there we go. We just add that in there, and we'll zoom in a little closer, get a little bit better of a look right there. And you should be able to see that top pin there. Now I'm going to protect it with the 220 ohm resistor because we're going to deal with 5 volts right there. So uh, much higher voltage, you'd want a larger value resistor, but 220 ohms is going to work really well for this circuit. Now I already have the uh, power supply. So we just wired up the switch. We recently did that. Power is on. There you can see that uh, the LED turns on when I press the switch. We got about 12, uh, 13 milliamps of current there until I release the switch. It stops off suddenly. So what we're going to do is just add that capacitor right there. That's simple. That's uh, the only uh, modification. And uh, so we're going to use a 100 microfarad capacitor. So you can see the uh, UF there or it's actually mu, the Greek letter mu, and then a 100. So they kind of cut off the number there. But that's what it is. And if you want it to take longer, you can use a larger value capacitor. If you want it to go shorter, you can use a smaller value capacitor. That's with the same uh, resistor there and with the uh, same voltage, 5 volts. So there's a number of modifications you can make. None of this is uh, absolutely necessary. But in any case, there we go. We hit the button. The LED turned on instantly. Now I release the button. The LED stayed on. And then now it is fading off. So actually, to make it more interesting, we'll get an idea of the current. Remember, this isn't completely accurate, the current that you see on here, but it's pretty close. It's usually between uh, 1 and 2 milliamps off. So it might be 14, might be 12, but it's close. So there we go. You can see it's holding steady. The transistor was saturated until you saw the current going down. Then it was in the active region, and uh, there's still a little bit of a glow, so it's kind of in the active region. But for the most part, it's off. So once that LED goes off completely, it will be in the cutoff region, where it's not conducting at all. The capacitor doesn't have enough voltage to uh, power it. So it does need 0.7 volts, or 0.6 volts, close to that, when you get to a lower currents the LED diode in there, base to emitter diode, 
uh, blocks a little less voltage. But in any case, it takes about 0.6 volts for a current to a flow. So once the capacitor discharges to that point, the LED will finally go out. But uh, it's pretty much cut off now. It's pretty much off. So that's it. All we had to do was add a capacitor. It made the circuit more interesting. And uh, in case you didn't know, the uh, top of the switch is always connected. The bottom of the switch is always connected. So the resistor right now is connected to the 10 kilo ohm resistor. There's a direct connection. When I close the switch, then all four pins connect. And then when I release the switch, we're back to just these two pins being connected down here, those two up there, but we can discharge the capacitor. And then it comes back to the negative rail because of the jumper up there. So that's it for this circuit. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, make sure you check out one of the other videos that I post on the screen. Click the like, subscribe, the bell, all that. I will see you in the next video.